Hello friends, I'm going to immerse you in a really important testing event that is designed to keep you safe all while doing what you love. Are you ready for it? Let's go. I'm here at the Smart Lab in Dayton, Ohio for the SEMC Fall to Rest Lanyard Testing Event. I'm excited about what's going on down here for it's another in a series of testing designed to help keep us climbers safe. I'm here with John Lamont, Vice President of Sales with GME Supply. John, tell me about the purpose of this testing and how it works. The purpose of the SMC has always been to take testing to a level beyond ANSI and really give the people that serve our industry in the field uh, some additional feedback on uh, what happens in real world scenarios. So how did you determine the real world scenarios for this testing? Well, one of the things that's best about the SEMC is that it brings together a really good cross section of the industry. So the worker itself, uh, we know the situations they're put in that are difficult and we know that they're making a decision when they purchase a lanyard, whether they're going with a factor one or factor two lanyard. So we wanted to make sure we replicated how they're using them in the field, what situations are most dangerous, and what they may not know impacts them as they're using a specific lanyard as they work. So you mentioned two types of lanyards, a fall factor one and a fall factor two. What's the difference? So for fall factor one lanyards, we wanna make sure that people are tied off above their head and it limits the distance they can fall. For fall factor two, we wanna look at what people do when they have foot level tie off, which increases the total distance that they, that they may fall. Now each lanyard, that can take a different amount of fall. Yes, so the further they fall, the, the more the impact on the body, and we really want to examine the impact from a long distance fall if you're using a factor one or factor two, and you're falling from being tied off of your feet. John, thanks a lot for filling us in on the testing. Let's go check things out. Hey JP, hey, Sean. tell me about this dummy test and how it works. Well, this is a 310 pound torso shaped weight that we use in our drop test. It's connected to the top through a quick release mechanism. So we're trying to replicate real world scenarios for the climbers. This is kind of the place that we get to step outside the boundary of normal testing and have some fun, break some stuff. Hey Joey, we got two types of towers here. What kind of tests are you guys performing? We're performing shock absorbing lanyard testing on telecommunication structures for fall protection safety. Real life situation is a whole lot different than what the ANSI standards are in a lab where we, we cannot predict what the attachments may or may not be. We wanted to make sure that our use of these lanyards is compatible with the safety of the tower tech in the field. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing here in the pre-inspection area. So from over on the table on that side, you see we have a uh, series of 19 energy absorbing lanyards from various uh, manufacturers in the industry. Then we actually do a pre-test inspection to make sure there's no flaws in the product. After that, we move it over to the next section for testing. So you guys are working up top. What is your job here? Basically what Brian and I are doing is we're responsible for taking the lanyards from the dummy, connecting them to the structure where the team decides we're gonna put it to prep to drop him. Force one lanyards and the force two drop was the biggest eye opener for me on this whole thing. Whoa. Wow. It is really, really incredible to see that happen. You wouldn't want to be the climber in that situation. No, no, no. So after a lanyard is tested, what exactly are you guys measuring here? So we're measuring to see how much it deployed, whether it fully deployed or partially deployed. It's not necessarily the measurement for this compared to other ones, but from its pre-measurement to its post-measurement when it dropped. 
So after you do the measurements, what exactly are you looking for on the beaners? I'm making sure that it still works properly, the gate still works. Then I go down and I look to make sure that there is stitching, is all still good. And then we go down to the shock pack to see if it's been deployed. And then we go down to Richard who's working on the leg that took the fall. It's all great stuff. Absolutely. Very important testing. All right, Jordan, after all the test results are taken, what are you doing with the data? So I'm taking everything that they're writing down on the papers, pre-measurements, post-measurements, any kind of damage from the inspections and stuff, and I'm inputting it into a very nice spreadsheet. And ultimately, a quicker way for us to get this out to the industry. You should see a white paper with the results pretty quick, just based on how we're doing it now. So everybody should see it on the Nate website with all of the details so on everything. Any tower climber can log on to the website and see yep. all the results of the gear that they can be using every day. The three main things to take away from this testing is never rig a lanyard to take a factor two fall if you have a factor one lanyard. Never rig a lanyard back to itself unless it's designed for it. And always read the manufacturer's instructions before using it. Folks, the SEMC and Nate will be publishing the results of all this testing, so be on the lookout for that. And that's all we got for now, so thanks for watching and stay safe.